Well, I sing them old songs, uh, uh, you know, bluegrass songs, and uh, and I can get along with them and enjoy them and everything. But sometimes I just shake my head and Lord just stops my voice and I can't sing them. <laughs> yep. There's some songs I can't sing. Yeah. I, I enjoy them, don't get me wrong, and I play along, and but uh, just don't have no heart to sing them. I, when I was a young boy, my parents took me to a Southern Baptist church. Uh, we attended there. It was, a, it was a, located in Illinois, but it was made up of all Kentucky and Tennesseans. And uh, they sang a song, and they never sang the third verse. They always left it off, you know. They sang the first, second, and fourth. They leave the third off. Preacher one night said, "There's two things in the Baptist church I would not want to be. I would not want to be the third verse of a song or the front pew." <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! I went down to a uh, uh, Fort Myers. Primitive Baptist Church, a fellow recommended to me, and, and they, uh, I was enjoying the singing. They were singing out of the old uh, Baptist hymnal, mm -hmm. uh, Primitive or whatever it's called. And uh, but they had another little book on the side, and uh, the woman called for the song. And of course, I was trying to sing along with them. But uh, uh, the song says, uh, "I wasn't there when uh, they nailed him to the cross, and I wasn't there." when they, uh, he rose from the grave and uh, I couldn't sing that song. I, I think I was there. I, I, I mean, they said I was too heavenly minded to be any earthly good, but you know, I, br brothers, I believe I was there. Yeah. I just have that feeling. <laughs> well, that's what Amen. Yeah, buried with him, died with him, buried with him, rose in him and reigned with him. Uh, Absolutely. That's the only way he's my perfect captain of my salvation. If he's seen everything that's in me, I got nothing to say. What can I say? True. I sat there one day reading the Bible and it said to me, I read the verses, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never known you. Yep. And, you know, all of a sudden I, I said, suppose the Lord says that to me just a thought in my head, you know, right. and um, I thought a minute and I said, well, Lord, how about all them, tra them tracks I give out? And how, how many of <laughs> them times I've done this? And, and then I was silenced. I don't know if you've ever been silenced, but he just nails me, nails me to the floor. Yep. And, you know, what come out of me was true and righteous are thy judgments. Yep. And after that, I had a peace I can't explain to you. Right, right. Well, so you maybe experienced some of that yourself. Oh yeah, there's what that old song. I wonder if I am or if I'm not. You know that as a constant battle. Some days I feel pretty certain that the Lord's mine. Other days I I doubt it very much. Just, I couldn't prove it. I couldn't prove it by you. Yeah. I said to uh, I was reading I was reading a book by. Now listen to this, Robert F. Lackey. Oh, it was okay. A uh, my, my my daughter bought it for me. It was about Chesapeake Bay, Harvard of Grace, and uh, you know where I've been from a long time. Right. And uh, uh, while he was going through it, the author was going through it. He's talking about people in the old days, how they lived in schooners, and there was no uh, motorboats or nothing like that. And he was talking about a man. Uh, this man here, the, the thing of the, and he was talking about he had to kill a man and stick the knife up in him, and he was going through all these details like an author would do. I said, uh -huh. I don't know what he's talking about. I said, I understand red blood coming out of a man with a knife in his nick in his heart and that right. kind of stuff, but it's the black blood that means death. It's when you hit the liver. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself. Now here's a man is is an author, a bestseller, and all this kind of stuff. He don't know nothing about what I knew, <laughs> and but I I still enjoyed the story. But how how weak we are and how how pitiful we really are, saying we're going to defend God and yeah. you know and all that. And 
I, 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 I'm, I'm held in awe by the power of God. That's right. Uh, so, someone said, you know, the storm of the night just makes the sun in the morning look that much brighter. Sometimes our suffering seems awful difficult. Yeah, but I understand. When the deliverance comes, it's even that more glorious, much more glorious. I know he was, uh, I was up to work there. I used to go to work at six o'clock in the morning and the plant manager come out and said, well, there's a hurricane. The uh, governor of the state of Delaware has closed it down. So I said, well, I said, I'm here. I might as well work, right. safe place. He said, no, you've got to leave. And of course he had his reasons for all that. And I just didn't understand him quite clearly. So I turned around, got in my truck and come on down. When I got down here to uh, live back out here in the country a little bit and uh, uh, the lines was down and the, the trees had broken the lines and they were snapping. And uh -huh. so I pulled off in the farm next to me. Well, it's up on a hill probably, oh, I don't know, maybe a hundred acres or 200 acres. Uh, got me a bag and I cut the head out and put, put it over my head. And I said, I'm going to walk on down here. And I seen them trees on the river here just, just blowing and waving. And I, it, so I get up here, I had to wade through water up to my waist. I got down here to the house and jumped wow. over the fence. And my wife said, are you crazy? She said, <laughs> I could hear you singing, Lord, the tempest is raging <laughs> all the way down a hill and up the up, back up. And I said, well, you know, this has been a great experience for me. I'm soaking wet. And, but you know, there's something about uh, the way the Lord talks to you through the even nature itself. Yeah. So I don't doubt them people want to go sit out in the woods and, and look at nature. I, I can't really, I don't judge them. Oh, oh. The Lord, the Lord will speak in whatever means he has proposed to do it. Well, definitely, it, seemed, it seemed to say that, the, that it reveals his power and Godhead just by observing things. Well, I, I do believe that I I've had discussions with, you know, Chet Dirks a lot of times about that. He says there ain't no good in human beings and all that. But I said, if it wasn't for us human beings, we'd never understand grace. Yeah. I don't think the angels still today understand grace. Absolutely not. But I understand it because it kicked me around a little bit. You know, I'm a hard-headed Welshman. <laughs> That's the way I was born. So what, what can I say? Our roots go back to Scotland. Oh, well, you know, the uh, ancestry... Uh, ancestry uh, DNA thing. They came back to the last one and said, I'm from Scotland. Really? My name is Clifford Lewis, L-E-W-I-S Evans. Yeah. If I ain't a Welshman, I don't think you're going to find one. I <laughs> haven't done it, but some of my relatives have done some research and we are akin to uh, uh, McGregor's was our name originally. The McGregor's. Uh -huh. Rob Roy is in our lineage. <laughs> well, there you go. Good. That's good. Yeah. My son took a trip, went to Ireland in 2019. I mean, Scotland. And he said, beautiful country. And he went to the tombs and stuff like that of Rob Roy and a bunch of them. But he said, after about four days, I couldn't wait to get back Ooh. into the state. He said, over there, <laughs> it's so liberal and uh, your little cars you rent, you know, he's got six kids and the little cars you rent would hold three or four comfortably, you know. <laughs> and he said the food, he tried every dish that they make, supposed to be Scottish. He said, I couldn't stand any of them. <laughs> they, they eat <laughs> some strange things. Yeah, he said my family and I, fortunately, we found a McDonald's. <laughs> Yeah, they eat some strange things. That's that's for certain. Yeah, he he he, he told me about something. I can't remember what it was, but he said, "Dad, you don't want to know what was in that." <laughs> Sounds like haggis. Yeah, haggis. I think that's what it was. I yeah. think that's what it was. Lungs and all sorts of things in that haggis. Yeah. Well, you know, I I, he said, I tried it. Said I couldn't get it all down. <laughs> I eat, I eat scrapple and love it. Used to go oh, scrapple, I do too. scrapple from my mother, and I could I could put a little olive oil in that pan, and and just get it brown on the outside, a little mushy on the inside. 
and she said I could cook scrapple better than any anybody she ever. She was ninety some years old, you know. But um, yeah. man, when 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 you figure out what's in scrapple, not too good. Yeah. I wouldn't be a good yeah. Jew. <laughs> <laughs> the um... you know I've never I've never eaten ch chitlins, but I smelled them. <laughs> But they're okay. Ain't nothing wrong with chicken. I can't get them past my nose. <laughs> Down there in um, Just a, Southern Virginia, I, I think it was Dan River Church. They used to have a chitlin dinner every year. Oh, you kidding? No. Yeah. So, somebody probably cook them right and some don't, but boy, the odor was something. It was when I was a kid and I was at another person's house. Well, ch chitlins is the uh, intestine. I'm glad, I'm glad they, I'm glad they, they out the intestine. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad they didn't tell, tell me they were cracklings because I love cracklings. I'd have sat down and I'd have been embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But you, have, uh, you have muskrats down there in uh, Mississippi? Muskrats? You know what that uh, is? We may, have, we may have some, Brother Cliff, but uh, I'm not really familiar. We're we're overrun with uh, possums and uh, coons and got some alligators in some of these little spots. But beavers, man, they get look like they're 40 foot long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we eat muskrats up here in Delaware, go across the line there, and uh, one of them towns out there about mid mid Delaware, Smyrna or Dover or someplace like that, and have a muskrat feast and they bring them out. Yep. They got a little bowl there and you just eat the muskrat and suck the meat off the jaws and throw it in the bowl, the bones, you know. <laughs> Robert, you uh, uh well you know what muskrats are. Oh yeah. Oh yeah when I tell when when I tell people up here that uh, during season, the local restaurants in Salisbury, sure. all of them have signs out. We got muskrat today. Oh, yeah. We got muskrat it today. It's a delicacy. Well, it is. It's a somebody, tradition. Somebody, I don't know, Brother Lackey, if it's you or what, but somebody said recently a friend of his would uh, almost kill for a possum. I've never ate possum either. My dad talked about how how he they used to they would um, catch them live, keep them, and fatten them up, <laughs> fatten them on corn. Well, well and and well, either looks like an overgrown rat to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they call them road people down here, <laughs> but a lot of people eat them. Well, yeah, I tell you what. Is hungry. I mean, really hungry. I don't think I've ever been hungry. No, we've never had a whole lot. I don't think I've ever really been what to really hungry. I believe you could eat anything if you're hungry enough. I think so too. Yeah, I've I've I've, 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 I've taken many roadkill deer. In fact, people come down the house here, knock on the door, and said, uh, "I just hit a deer up the road here," and I'd get up and pick up truck and pick him up. As long as they wasn't the night chair, as long as they wasn't uh, could bleed out, you know. They're, they're, right. Well, sometimes the shoulders was hit, you know, and you couldn't eat that meat with right. the blood in it. But I, I, I'm done. I had one, one guy. I, I went up there to the road, right up the road here, and uh, and uh, seen a deer, and a state trooper was there, and he says, uh, he says, "What are you doing here?" I said, "Well, man, come to my house." The boy that probably hit the deer. And said uh, the deer was hit, hit, and could I take care of it? I said, yeah. So he said, well, I was going to call somebody, but since you're here, we'll go ahead and load it up. And I said, where are you from, fella? He says, I'm from Frederick, Maryland. I said, well, you ought to know what deer is. He said, no, I, I don't really know much about deer hunting or nothing. So anyway, he he, uh, he was going to hit, throw in the back of the pickup truck, and he was going to go one, two, three. Well. The way we load deer is just pick it up and sling it, you know, float in the back and pick up. And when I did all the all the, the, the hurt and all, the deer come out on his pants, his wool. He 
Trey oh, Cooper's no. up here. I've won. I said, I said, Trooper, you better come on down the house and get cleaned up because you don't want to walk into Northeast Barracks with that blood running down your leg, you know. <laughs> so he come down here. And, so he's a washing up in the sink. And my wife comes down and she says, what have you done now? <laughs> and here he is with soapy hands. He can't get to his pistol. <laughs> Poor guy, but after all, we straight up. But he said he'd never seen a, a deer gutted. Can you believe a man from Frederick, Maryland, which is close to West Virginia, right? No, it's not too far, yeah. Well, never seen a deer gutted. No. So I, I took him out. He had a little light on the side of his car. He, he brought it around on me. Had plenty of light, and so I showed him how to, you know, clean the deer up, you know, hang it and get it blood out. But yeah, I can't believe these people's uh, wandering around the, wandering around Maryland, the state troopers, never seen a, a deer gutted. But I think a lot of people, young people's like it at, you know, just never, oh, I think they so. never had experience. Yeah. Nope, sure haven't. Hello, John. Hi, Brother Cliff, how are you? I'm doing good, and I want to thank you for that uh, that sermon by um, Mike. Oh, Brother Mike? Oh, you're welcome. Uh, about, uh, yeah, reparation and election. Yes. I, I, I enjoyed that. Oh, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Thanks for sending. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I try to send it to as many people as I can, you know, so they can see it. Well, this Sunday we didn't have it because there was so much ice on his uh, driveway Ooh. that we couldn't get, we couldn't, you know, we wouldn't be able to drive down. We'd get stuck. Mm. Well, and now enjoy, enjoy the winter. Yeah. Well, now it's uh, hey. it's all melted away. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone already. It started Christmas Eve, and then again, it started Christmas Day. It stopped, and it slowly it started melting, and today it was completely gone. It's warm out. So. Brother Lackey. Yes, Brother, sir. Brother Mike Smith uh, put a thing on uh, Facebook today. I, I asked him. Um, he said he just got this book. He's ready to dive into it. It was the works and writings of, of Cleve Brantley. Yeah, Cleve Brantley. Yeah, I don't. I never have heard that name before. Well, there are two things you might have heard. We reprinted the uh, tie that binds. All right, I'm study not on predestination. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chapel Library used to keep in print the manner of the kingdom. Hmm. And Brother Barry used to distribute a lot of those. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to look into that because I, I the name the name just didn't ring a bell to me. But I do remember the tie that binds. I've got a Xerox copy of that here at the house. Yeah, he's the one that wrote that. I just didn't put the name together. Yeah, I've got to get a copy of that. Uh, Looks like a brand new uh, hard It's copy. a brand new printing. Yeah. Particular Baptist Press hmm. is who put it out. And I do need to get a copy of that. I, it looks pretty good. I, I just I just couldn't place the name. And uh, when he told me he, he wrote that Tied to Binds, I, I, I realized who he was. I noticed the book looked like brand new. Yes, just just come out. They just got them. Uh, been been waiting for the uh, notice that that they were in stock and it happened. Last week. Uh, hey, brother, brother Robert, were you yeah. on this morning? No. Oh, okay. I, I no. didn't know if I was cut off the, uh, usually my phone rings and says you're on, but it, it didn't ring. And I thought maybe I was cut off the list or something. Nope. 
No, it is. Um, I, I've been just. Uh, okay. The last two days have been really. Um, now, you don't have to give me an excuse. I just want to make <laughs> sure I'm still in a loop. I oh get, yeah. I get kicked out a lot of places, so I'm used to it. Twenty bucks for hardbound for the hardbound volume. Let it, works and letters of Cleve Brantley. Yeah, yeah. Twenty bucks. Idolatry, the sin of nature, the tie that binds, the manner of the kingdom, the grace of God, the soul winner, the stranger, songs in the night, letters of Cleve Brantley to Gary Long. Mm -hmm. Um. What period did he live in, Brother Robert? Um, he died in the 70s. Oh, okay. I, th I thought uh, Gary Long was pretty current. Oh, Gary Long is. He's, the, he's the, the, the dude behind particular Baptist press. Okay, I got you. He used to live in Norfolk. Virginia. He um and and I talked to him a couple of times when uh, when uh, he was was living in Norfolk. He was, uh, was um, um um he, he joined he joined the joined navy the... again. You say, so brother? he could get a retirement. Oh. And he was in the naval intelligence down in Norfolk. Just leave, honey. And I used to I used to talk to him on the phone quite a bit while he was down there. I enjoyed talking to Gary. He's the one I asked because uh, I'd I'd heard from somebody I don't know who. I said, well, that that Gary Long. He's a Reformed Baptist. And so I asked him, and there was silence on the other end. And he says, no, I don't believe a person can be reformed and a Baptist. That's a good answer. And that's when he said, the Baptists have two big problems. And I said, what's that? He said they either get the theology from the dispensationalist or the reformed. Huh. Yeah, that's a pretty good analysis. I thought it was. Yeah. Well, look here. There's John Napier. There's Gabriel Gonzalez and Doug Wickenhofer. How are you? <laughs> hey, brethren. It's good. Sorry, I'm a little bit late here. I got in a little bit late tonight. That's all right. Are, uh, are you over the COVID? Um, I am. I'm still having issues with it, but I'm actually over it. Uh, Teresa actually developed pneumonia, but she's doing a little bit better. Oh, she um, she really got sick over this thing. It, it is a pretty serious disease for for many people. True. Um, but we're, we're alive and well. Good. Glad to hear it. Yes, yeah, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Oh, you. Man. Well, I wonder where Brother Gabriel went. I saw him on here.
I'll be right back. Y'all go ahead and talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Uh, you promised uh, to give us a topic for this evening. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I didn't get I didn't get it. I, I'm not as smart as you fellas, and I got to read my Bible a little bit about the topic. <laughs> I got to read mine I, a lot. <laughs> what? I got to read mine a lot. Oh, okay. What, 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 did I miss the topic? We don't know what the topic is. I don't. Oh, okay. Mr. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> brother Nate, brother Prupchuk, I apologize. I owe you a phone call, my friend. That's all right, brother. I just wanted to see how you were. I was worried about you and your wife. Yes, yeah, so she she was the one that got the sickest. I was uh, I I had a fever for about three days and was pretty sick for a couple of weeks. But um, I'm over. I still got shortness of breath and a little bit of congestion. But um, she's she's doing a little better. She's okay. been out of work for three weeks now. Oh, yeah. She's got to get approval to get back. She works at a hospital. And sure. So she's got to um, she's got to go Monday, and and um, that disease is pretty serious for a lot of people. I can tell you though, which I'll probably know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that you know they, that's all they talk about on the news, and I just stopped watching it because it's too depressing. Yeah. yeah. You know, I can only do. I can only imagine what it was like in uh, the Spanish flu in in the uh, early 1900s, 1918, 1919. Oh my! How bad yeah. it was, and they don't they don't have near the hospital situations or the or the modern technology that we have. And there were a lot of poor people; they couldn't afford to go to yeah. the hospital. Yeah, and a lot of them probably didn't even know what they had, and they died from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty serious stuff. You know, I it, think about um. Uh, some of the plagues in the Bible, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, wonder if it could have been some of these diseases similar to what we have now. You know, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, some of these, some of this corona can kill people in a few days. They get it and it travels really quickly, and um, and well, they're they sick. Probably, and, yeah, they know? probably have underlying conditions. Yes, yes. You know, there's always I, that I, underlying condition because my my aide got the coronavirus. So I haven't seen him in over a week. Yeah. And he's hoping to come back on Monday. Yeah. But uh, what happened was he left on Friday and he went to a ball game. The next day he started feeling really bad and sick. Yeah. I tested and he was uh, positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how fast it is. But he's all right now, he said. Yeah. You know that new one coming out of Great Britain? They say is um, um, not any deadlier, but more contagious. Yeah. We'll and what I'm worried, what I'm worried about is that needle, that injection for the coronavirus. Yeah, there's been some people pretty sick over that thing. A few, I mean, a few, not very many, but you know. They won't uh, take it. <laughs> There was a woman that they showed her getting the injection. She was a nurse. Yeah. 20 minutes, she passed out. They revived her. The next day, she died. Oh, boy. Was that, a, that an allergic response? I have no, no, it was the corona. There's a lot of poison in the coronavirus. I don't trust anything that's in it. You know, they showed Kamala Harris getting the injection. Yeah. It was probably sugar water, for all I know. Not impressed because they sure has, let me let me give her the injection. <laughs> she won't be. You're smiling. not you're not skeptical, are you, brother? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just don't trust people <laughs> because they're a big wig. It doesn't mean I trust them anymore. You know. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The, the creepiness starts at the head of the, you know, of the government. I don't Brother, trust them. Brother John, you're on good ground. The scripture says, trust not in princes nor for help on man depend. Oh, amen. Thank you. Yeah. I had a Bible verse and I didn't even know it. <laughs> well, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a rhyme of that verse. <coughs> I think the Psalter said it that way. Oh, okay. So, 
so Robert, uh, what's it? What's the topic for this evening? You said you was going to have a topic. Yeah, I did, but I don't. I didn't come up with one. Um, I don't know what. Uh, I don't know. Hey, brother Lucky? Lucky? Yo. I've I've got a thought that I've been um, I've been playing with for years that I'd like to maybe just throw it out there and see what y'all think. All right. There you go. All Here right. it comes. All right, we'll let all the experts uh, have this one. Okay. <laughs> chapter chapter six of Genesis. Okay. Genesis chapter six. And I'll I'll read it to you in uh Verse 1, it says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives, all of which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, and his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. And the next verse, I think, ties into that. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bore children to them and the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown now if you read some of the apocrypha or some of the hidden some of the lost books of the bible and you go through enoch and jesser and some of those um what it tells me and what i believe and i don't know if you all agree with it or not but um, the sons of God were angels that came down and married human women or, or had sex with human women and came up, you know, the children were, were giants. What do you all think about that? I agree with you, except I wouldn't call them angels. I, I just well, call them spiritual beings. Spiritual beings, demons. Yeah. Spiritual beings, yes. Spiritual An angel being. just means messenger, right? Correct. The angel just messenger. We don't know whether the uh, the sons of God uh, seem to uh, when it talks about like uh, in uh, Job when the sons of God presented themselves and Satan what? was among them. Seems what? like it might have been um, all of the if you will, ranks of spiritual beings. Of, of whatever types, yes. Yeah, whatever type. Yeah. They were all there. And the same when uh, when he says, uh, well, time to time to get old Ahab. How are we going to do it? Yeah. You know, there was sons of God there too, I believe, with them. When one said he'd be a lying spirit in the mouth of Ahab's prophets. Yep. Well, I, I kind of thought I was the only one. You know, Brother Lackey, the, um, the church that I came from years ago, um, they they believed that that was not true. They did not believe that angels came down and did that sort of thing. But, you know, angels, I think, or I say angels, these spiritual beings, these demons and, and whatever, I really think they influence much on the earth. I think, you know, we, we deal with powers of darkness. Um, and I think that's an ongoing thing. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah, that's against right. Principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness. Yes. Yep. Gabriel told Daniel. Man, I've been coming with the answer to your prayer for a few days now, but the prince of Persia withstood me, and he wasn't talking about uh, Darius the Mede or somebody like that. He's talking about another spiritual being. Yeah. And I don't know why we would think that the Lord's dealing with nations would be any different now than it was then. If he what? set evil and good over over them however he did pleased him he's still doing it yes 
Yes. I, I think of some of the, uh, I don't want to be political, but, but, you know, some of the things that are going on in our country now, um, you kind of sort of have two sides. And, um, you know, with all the cultural rot is going on, I, be, I believe is greatly influenced by these dark powers. And it's nothing, like you say, Brother Lackey, it's nothing new. No, it's the same thing. It's always been. Yeah. Yep. I'm muted if you don't do that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm making <laughs> Unless you want to come and cook. <laughs> and I'm done with that anyway, so. Oh, good. <laughs> Today was you know, a there's, there's, there's a lot of different things uh, we could, we could uh, think about that, but... It's been years since I have looked at this book. I don't even have it here. And I'll be honest about it. For years, I thought it was a man, Jesse Penn Lewis. I have heard that name before. She wrote a book called War on the Saints. Yes. I have actually read that book years ago. Me too. I've read it as well. And if I remember right, it, it's kind of uh, on what we're talking about. And I'm just looking at a list of her work. She's got another one on spiritual warfare and another one on uh, the warfare with Satan. Well, isn't that book still available? War on that... the Saints? I think yeah. you can download it in a PDF even. Oh. Um, I may even have it buried in books somewhere around here. Well, I think mine's on the shelf back in Oklahoma. Uh, I think I think that's where mine is. Um, let's see here. Um, it's a Ben Lewis book. Yeah. <sighs> I'm glad uh, you brought that up. I, I didn't because that has not been in my. I would have never thought of that. I don't know why, but it's been a long time. I bet it's been forty years since I read that book. Yeah, I understand. Side issue: uh, Arthur W. Pink took that position in his book on Genesis. Is that right, Arthur Pink? Yeah, he did. He took a lot of other. Liberty, that's <laughs> all. <awesome. laughs> uh, Especially on a pre-existing Earth. I've got that uh, gleanings in Genesis, but I'll confess I never read it. Um, I read it back when I was just a young whippersnapper. Yeah, he's got to warn the saints. Ninety. It's only ninety-nine cents. Well, see, I'm trying. I'm trying to find a free one here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I found it, but you got to sign up for this site mm -hmm. to 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 get it. Man, here, academia, the life and influence of Jesse Penn Lewis, centrality of the cross, Jesse Penn Lewis. My goodness gracious! He's got another one that's interesting too. Uh, Awakening in Wales. Yes, oh, that's, that's interesting. A great Welsh revival. She was Welsh. Yeah. She States. was from Wales, so yeah. Wow. So, uh, but yeah, that War on the Saints. I bought that a hundred years ago, back in the <laughs> mid seventies. I mean, uh, and read it, and and I thought it was very interesting at the time. I'd probably think it's even more interesting now. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what, what's it saying, Daniel? This is by the decree of the Watchers. Yes, the, the Watchers. Ones. That's also mentioned in some of the books of Enoch from the uh, yes. lost books. Yes. We call them the Watchers. Yep. Yeah. Enoch's got blood on the Watchers. Yeah. You know, they say they were supposed to come down 
and kind of guide or keep track of humans after the fall. Right. And um, <clears throat> some of them totally disobeyed and they taught all sorts of things, taught weaponry, uh, ways of war and all kinds of horrible things. <laughs> and that may be how, you know, humans got these things. You ever hear of Michael Heiser? I have not. He wrote a book called The Unseen Realm. Michael, Michael what? Heiser, H-E-I-S-E-R. He's also got a podcast called The Naked Bible. And he's, that, now, let me warn you, he is an RV. Yeah. He, he goes so far as to say, if Adam didn't have a free will, a true free will in the garden, we might as well consider the whole book of Genesis a myth. So with that caveat, <laughs> now that you know that, <laughs> I'm going to say when he starts talking about the Watchers and the Nephilim and things like that, he's got a lot of insight on that. And sometimes it's better to listen to his podcast than read his book. Um, it, uh, the Naked Bible. Um, his um, doctorate is in Semitic languages and he is big on Enoch. Really? Oh yeah, man. Yeah. He is. Um, he is. Uh, he works with Logos Bible Software, and uh, he was involved in a um, in. Uh, they're doing a lot of stuff now through a publishing house called Lexham, which is their publisher. They just published a new English edition of the Septuagint, and uh, they're doing some stuff on Enoch now as well and Hermonia the the real liberal modern Lutheran commentary set has a has a commentary on Enoch in it with a new translation uh, the old R.H. Charles translation that, that everybody used for so long um, there's two or three new ones now and, and one of them's this um this Harmonia, you can buy the the commentary is about seventy five dollars, uh, or you can get just the new translation of the book for like twenty. So, um, and um, what is it called? It's not Audible. It's the other one. Um, I'll think of it. There's a free download of a real good version audio book of it. Because uh, I, I listened to it earlier this year through um, whatever that is where you can LibriVox. LibriVox provides free audio book downloads uh, read by amateurs. So the quality varies from book to book, but that girl that does Enoch, she is good. She's a good reader. Yep. Uh, LibriVox. And that's the old R.H. Charles translation. Um, little green book when I got it uh, back in 77, 78. Is, it, is that just on Enoch or? Yeah. You, um, yeah. Have you heard of um, Joseph Lumpkin, Joseph P. Lumpkin? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, he's, he's the versions that I, that I look at. Um, okay. His commentaries are, are pretty, I thought, pretty good. I think he's a, he a Southern Baptist or something. I'm not really sure. Lumpkin, yeah. He's yeah. Southern Baptist. Yeah. And... Um, but those books like, like Jasher and Jubilees and yes. Enoch, 
Yep. Those three in particular were the Pilgrim's Progress and um, um, well, if we go to the next century, well, Pilgrim's Progress stayed in print, so we'll say Pilgrim's Progress and um, um, well, pick two other books that's been in print for a long time of uh, first of second century BC Jews. <coughs> Second and third century BC Jews, all the way to second and third century AD Christians. That was their reading material uh, to supplement, that supplemented the scriptures. They were, uh, oh. people knew about those books back then and read yeah. them. Yeah. Well, some of those books were quoted, not those, but, the, but there were some, I guess, Enoch. even earlier, like Enoch was quoted. By Jude? Yep. And I think in some place by Jesus? Uh, there's an allusion in, in yep. there. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. There sure so is. So they're, 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 pretty, um, they're pretty old, and, and um, apparently they were around, a few of them were around before, um, even before <clears throat> Jesus was born. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All three of them, I believe, yep. were. Yep. Um, on even uh, older uh, translations mm -hmm. that maybe maybe have been lost, you know, based on the newer ones. Um, it's, it's just, that's fascinating to me. Me too. Um, but for one reason or another, God said, well, this is the, this is what I want you all to know. And he gave us the Old Testament and the New Testament. Correct. Gracie, what's another baby? What about, brethren? Are those um, are those sons of God? The same sons of God that, well, at least similar beings that Hello. presented themselves before the Lord when Satan come among them? Or are they the sons of, and daughters of Seth? Yeah, I've heard that as well. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I tend to think it has to be some sort of spiritual being. Well, the, the one thing is that apparently it, it produced giants. There was some strange thing going on there. And it says men of renown. I have never really understood that, except they were ancient, ancient beings. Right, exactly. And, uh, well, look at, uh, uh, look at Goliath. Yeah, yeah. He they existed for a long time. Right. You know, yes. and brother, I, I want to bring this up too, because um, I heard a message a long time ago, I've got it on tape somewhere, that when it talks about Noah, he was he was righteous in his generation. And the, right. He was pure in his generation, but it didn't say anything about his wife. Right, right, right. And that perhaps some of that DNA or whatever you would call it carried on through the flood, and it may even had you know passed on to one of the sons, and that's why we have the Raphium. Um, like Goliath after after the flood. Well, you know, I mean, just just a thought there. Uh, and and I don't uh, I don't I don't see any reason to think that that should be anything strange, um, because um, well, what was I going to say about it? Oh. We know, or I think we know, I think we can deduce at least that Ham's wife was a descendant of Cain. Yeah. Or yeah. she wouldn't have named her son Canaan. Yeah, that's right. 
I agree. Yeah. You know, I think I think that's how the Canaanite mm-hmm. blood came uh, uh, across the the flood. So you know, exactly. So whose wives? Which which wife would have had that? One or two? Who knows? But yeah, yeah that's a very valid, very valid way of of getting it in there. You know, it's interesting too that what the grandson of Ham was named Cush. Yes. Right? Which means chaos. I I often wonder about that. Mm-hmm. Yep. From that, and it wasn't long after that came Nimrod. Right. And Babel. And Babel, yeah. The first Armenian project. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let us build a tower to reach to heaven. <laughs> yep. We go get up there right with God. Yep. So brother and I, I I'll add a comment here. Doesn't doesn't add much to the subject, but whether or not the Nethanims, the monsters, the sons of God or spiritual or fallen angels as some believe I believe they didn't exist there's enough evil in my one heart to create a thousand of them Mm -hmm. we would still not be void of all the problems were they all non-existent oh I agree brother I really do but you have to also consider you know that there are principalities and powers that don't come from us that are existent and were existent and will be existent till God deals with all of it. There's a there's the scripture that you read says and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man. And this is the phrase that I point out. For that he also is flesh. Somebody tell me why that might have been added. The man is flesh. Is that what you're talking about? Is that seeing that he is also flesh. (coughs) I've always wondered about that myself. Got that word little also in there? Yes. I understand. He also is flesh. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yeah, I've always wondered why it was necessary to add that. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, you got me curious now. You sure do, brother. I had never considered that little word. Kissy, you're going to pick my shirt to death. That looks good, John. What'd you say? That looks mighty good. Oh, the sugarless cookies. Shortbread. Yeah. Well, we're good, my hot chocolate. You gonna send John? You gonna send some to me? Sure. <laughs> I'll send you a text. <laughs> well, you're diabetic. You're diabetic too. <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
My sugar's low, so I'm not worried. Well, the Septuagint has it. Doesn't have the also in there. Well, let me get my look at that. Yeah. It says, No way should my spirit stay with these men on account of their being flesh and their days will be 120 years. Let me see what the old translation of the Septuagint says. Kids? Well, well we're just a little, darling. Get on daddy's Yeah, Brother Munt, let me read this in mind. Um, verse 3, is And God said, My spirit shall not certainly not remain among these men forever, because they are flesh. Mm -hmm. But their day shall be in 120 years. So it's, it's kind of like an adjective toward men. Yeah. It's not speaking about uh, it doesn't look like it's speaking about the sons of God. It looks like it's speaking sp specifically about men. Right. <clears throat> and the Lord said, my spirit shall certainly not remain among these men forever because they are flesh. Yeah. But their days should be 120 years. Now the giants were on the earth in these those days. Yes. What always fascinated me, and, and I don't really understand it, and said that call those giants men of renown. Yep. I've tried I've tried looking at that in everything. What does that mean? Well, I just think it means they were um they were folk heroes. People talked about them. Because they were, yeah, they were big. They were, they were mighty, giants. They were... mighty giants in battle. They were the, yep. they were the Jesse James and the, um, of that generation. Yeah, I wonder the Septuagint. about how does the Septuagint interpret that renown? Is it renown? Oh no, let's look. It it in mine it just uses renown, men of renown. It doesn't change it. In other words, it doesn't really. Translated, I guess. Doesn't give you any more clarity, huh? No. Now, yeah, it, in 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 um, I guess it's in the Book of Enoch. You know, it's been a while since I read it, but it said that these giants, these these spawn of these demons, they destroyed the earth. They just ruined everything before the flood, mm -hmm. and the, it. And that they were they were responsible for a lot of the violence that was there, and the the chaos that was created, and as a result, God destroyed it all, except for eight souls. Genesis three, Genesis six. Yeah. And you can see it is hard to remember if it's either. Giants from ages, men renowned or renowned men. Oh no, Mastoy. Let's see here, 36. Years ago, when I uh, made a little study of that, not much, because I'm not for it nor against it at this point. <clears throat> Some men say that, that that phrase 
can also be interpreted monstrous. That is some men who I read after. Right. It may well be. Let's see here. Why are you 3687, looking famous. And according to this, it, it, it's famous. The word is famous. Um, it it uh, is used in Isaiah 56, 5. Even in the context, wouldn't it be famous for their wickedness? Renowned it could, could be, yeah. In the context, I think it would yeah. be, yeah. Yeah. They didn't have a Facebook page and everybody put a like on it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. Where am I? Isaiah 50, what? 56.5. That's Isaiah. I'm sorry. Is that you said Isaiah what? Fifty six five. Okay. So I will give them to them in my house and in my wall a famous place better than sons and daughters. An eternal name I will give to them and it shall not cease. Mm -hmm. so doesn't seem like it help us, helps us much, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I, I'm Same trying word. to get things that might really mm -hmm. stick out Zephaniah 3 19 and 20. Well I hadn't been in that book in a while. Zephaniah 3 19 and 20. All right. And it says, I'd turn the page, it would say, all right, behold, I will act among you because of you in that time and I will deliver her being pressured and I will take her being thrust away and I will establish them for boasting and fame in all the earth. And the enemies shall be disgraced in that time whenever I should do well with you. And in the time whenever I should take you in, for I'll make you famous. And for boasting among all the peoples of the earth, in ret my returning your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. So evidently it, it means kind of like what we would call famous. Uh, famous, yeah. Even though in this case it might be more infamous. Yeah. There's a a couple of references I'm thinking of uh, when the Jews was going across to Jordan, they sent the spies out there and they were scared to death of the giants right. that was in there. Yeah. And um, I, uh, of course, one of my favorite guys is Caleb said, it's the Lord that fighted for you. What in the world are you worried about? But you know, uh, the Lord has proposed from the foundation of the world giants with renown that threaten our very existence. And they are enemies of man. Amen. I believe he put them there because 
just like that big gold Goliath uh, you were talking about. Yeah. Little shepherd boy said, is there not a cause? And that, that words are ringing my heart a little bit. And I, I understand uh, not to say I'm a free will or nothing, but sometimes I feel a cause come upon me. And uh, he went out there and with them five smooth stones and knocked that giant right in the head. Yep. What killed Goliath? It wasn't the stones. And it, it was wasn't. Good. He couldn't even lift Saul's sword. The armament was too heavy for this young boy. Mm -hmm. Yet he had the strength to pick up Goliath's sword, which was huge, and cut that big old sinewy neck right, right to the quick and killed him. Yep. You know, people right. say, oh, well, did, look what David did. <laughs> you, can never, you can't convince me if you beat me with a stick. But God <laughs> didn't kill that Goliath. And God will take care of every Goliath that ever comes up in our lives. I really yeah, believe that. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Amen. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. I, it don't mean nothing to me. It's the Lord that fights for me. It's up to me, and I'm well armed, but uh, I've been dealing with that too because where's my faith if I understand he's fighting for me? I really don't need those things, but uh, it's, it's, it's quite a thing that the giants in your life and your life and your life and your life are different maybe than my giants, but mm -hmm. they're still here. And if the Lord put them up there for us to learn a lesson, and if it ain't a lesson of grace, I can't tell you what the lesson is. So, as they floated down and, and bred with women or whatever you guys are saying, I have no, I have no discernment on that. But I know there's giants in each of our lives. And the Lord's capable of subduing them according to his time. Amen. Everything according to his purpose. Right. <laughs> Does the scripture, when the Lord said, you'll be like the angels, they neither marry or are given in marriage in heaven. Does that have any bearing on what we're discussing? Brother, I, I've thought about that a lot too. And I think that's where they violated it. I think that's that was the angels, messengers, demons, mm -hmm. spiritual beings. That was their sin, or one of their sins. There's a there's another question I've always wondered about in studying these things or looking at them. Can a demon or a spirit operate in this world outside of a physical presence <laughs> without a medium? Well, well, how's he going to get in that medium if it can't? Yeah. We, you know that we have several episodes where these messengers came down with Lot, and with Abraham, with Jacob, right? Well, Jacob was probably the Lord himself, but we know that they come down and be in, in physical beings, but you're, you're asking if they can come down in anything other than physical? Is that what you're asking, Brother I'm, Gregory? I'm asking about operating, okay? As uh, operating? These evil yeah. operations, do they work through men or do they work somewhere out in the atmosphere? I think the answer to the question is yes. I think it depends uh, on which ones you're talking about. Uh, I do too. I think they can operate wherever they choose. Where, where because the because the, the prince of Persia that withstood Gabriel on Daniel certainly wasn't operating through a man, through anything physical on this earth. He was operating in his own power, I believe, of mm -hmm. course, controlled by God. Uh, but um, um, well, certainly Satan... Satan is is one of the is the superior fallen angel, and he clearly operates not necessarily in man. When the Lord said, uh, "Satan, get thee behind me," I mean, I think that he was influencing, but maybe he wasn't in possession of a human. At least that's my thought. So he was speaking to Peter when he said that. Yes. Yeah. But I think he was calling out Satan at the same time. I, I don't. I, I don't think. 
Peter was possessed? I mean, doesn't seem like he was. Yeah. But we admit we could all be used, right? Yes, I believe oh, so. Oh, my goodness. We're playing, yep. and we can be used. And I noticed all of the demons in the scripture that I see, like the madman of Gennadaray and all those demons that were in him. Mm -hmm. Operated yep. through him, and he was, they were visible through the person of that, that man. Yes. So I've yep. always wondered if, when we speak about principalities and powers in the air, are we talking about something that we can't see, something that we can't identify, or do they operate in and through a medium, whether it's our best friend or our worst enemy? Well, what, you, what, you, what did Gehazi see? I missed that, Cliff. Well, what did Gehazi see? Good point. Elisha says, open up his eyes. Mm -hmm. He saw a battle going up in the sky. Mm -hmm. Was that just an uh, illusion or I believe it was real. Well, I think they're fighting all the time. For what Amen. purpose? I have no idea, but I believe it. And there was no human being involved with that. Uh, I, 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 I understand what you're saying, Brother Greg. We, um, I have been reading um, history about Adolf Hitler and about Lenin and about Marx. I've been doing that for the past year. And Karl Marx, everything I've read was clearly absolutely possessed. He, deal, he dealt with um, apparently devil worship and some of his writings reveal there was something going on with that man's mind. And I believe that some of these atrocious acts in the world were directly involved from demon possession or demon influence. And it probably was in people. Um, everything that, I, that I've read and I've seen, I, I just can't imagine that it not being uh, influence, in, influencing people, actual real people. And, and probably was possession. Well, listen, brother, my experience, and like I said, I know experience is not the best teacher. Sometimes we're fooled by it. But I, in my experience, the only thing that ever seems to have harmed me comes at me in the form of another individual or maybe many individuals. And like I said, it could be the kiss of a false brother or it could be the slap of a, of a sworn enemy. But I don't know any time anywhere in my experience I've been harmed by a spirit. Now that, well, that, me... that's just experience. I'm not talking about what is and what isn't because I can't say I'm for it or I'm against it. Yes, it's sir. questions that I have in my mind. Well, I do I do feel this with in my own life that that I have had thoughts before that were not spiritual, that were they were not godly thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I often wonder if these thoughts, I mean, I, I know I have a fallen nature. Yep. But I wonder if they were also influenced by spiritual beings. Um, and, because there are times when I'll say, why am I thinking like this? What is wrong? What is wrong with me? I know it's my fallen nature, mm -hmm. but. Um, I, I can I can admit, brother, that uh, I don't need any help. Yeah. Uh, I'm so fallen, so corrupt. Uh, my heart's deceitful. My mind is carnal. Uh, I don't need much help if I need any to create. To the only thing I look for is the restraining hand of and the grace of God. Yes, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. But do you I, never I do you ever can I believe if the devil didn't exist, there's enough evil in the wicked fallen nature of my heart to create a hundred devils. I may be wrong, but that's the way I see my flesh. Yes, I, I agree. I agree hundred percent. I I'm right there with you. But you, do you never consider the fact that 
that there is outside influences that, that's that, that, that's that work on our flesh? But let, let me also say, this is not a criticism, it's just an observation. It becomes easy to blame a false spirit or the devil for the evil actions that we do. And it becomes like a, uh, a help stick. We kind of use it as a crutch mm -hmm. to excuse our fallen nature and our sinfulness, which is the wickedness just is indescribable. I agree. I, I'm not excusing it. I noticed, I, Job, I noticed yeah. uh, Job's dealings with Satan, okay? Or Satan's dealings with Job. Whatever you make of that, I know that he never, he never blamed Satan for anything that happened to him. Nothing. Yeah. He, uh, he said, uh, I know who I'm dealing, I'm paraphrased, I know who I'm dealing with, and he's of one mind and no man can turn him. Yeah. Uh, not once did he blame Satan for all the things that were happening in his life. I'd say he's an absolute predestinary. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so too. And not, not only that, he, um, it says plainly that in all that he, uh, did not sin or charge God foolishly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I do know also the Bible says that, you know, Satan, he lurks around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. That's in, to me, that's influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have enough sin in our lives and we are sinful. And there, and there is no excuse. I'm going to throw something out here that might get me banned from the next zoom meeting <laughs> i don't think so brother but uh i think we have to to carefully discern things that belong to the old economy or covenant mm -hmm. and the things we have in the new mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. lord did something when he came and died he redeemed us for sure right, right. but it also says that he destroyed our enemies yeah. I don't know what others make of that. I'm just a simple country boy. I believe he destroyed our enemies. I name mm -hmm. them, call them who they are, but I believe our Lord took care of that. Yeah, it would make sense. That's why I, that's why I say I wonder about the angels we talk about, and Brother Robert mentioned about uh, the angel of Persia and so forth. Mm -hmm. I, I truly wonder because that old covenant and that old law was placed in the hands of angels who right. operated that way. Mm -hmm. and in the covenant of grace and the new covenant, and this is just my uh, view, and I won't argue with it about it, but the only angel I know anything of about today is the angel of God's presence, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the only one I look to to protect me. He's the only one I look to to bring me to glory. He's the only one that we can lean on. Right. And I don't need the 10,000 angels. Now that's, like I said, that may be really heretical, but mm -hmm. that's, that's the position I presently hold without arguing with anybody about it. I don't see it as heretical. I think it's accurate what you're saying. But like, like I said, I think these things are good. That What we're doing here on Zoom to me is one of the blessings is that we can discuss these things mm -hmm. and not be, charged, not be charged with being totally unorthodox and heretical. <laughs> yes, sir. But if, well, you, I, if you read Pink's uh, Genesis, you will find and he pretty well took that position you're discussing now. And like I said, if you if you look at other parts of it, he even believed in a pre-existent world. And he uses terms such as repeople the earth or replenish the earth. Well, why would God say replenish if it wasn't uh, if it didn't exist with inhabitants prior? Right. right. Pink, Pink also believes what I guess you're referring to what the gap theory. Yes, yeah, what that's what I'm talking yeah. about. He, 
Right. And you you can stuff everything you want to in that once you open it. That's mm. why I re I rejected it at about 22 years old when I read the book. It just like, hey, this looks like a way to compromise evolution with creation. Mm. A lot of truth there, brother. A lot of truth to that. That a gap theory uh, to me that uh, replenish the earth the only scripture they've got. I don't like gaps in anything, brother Robert. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> so that that's the only that's the only way you can make try to make a gap out of that is with <laughs> yeah. with that re and and. Um, Oh, he goes in. It became dark. You know what I mean? The earth. Oh yeah, yeah. He uses all those terms, and he uses the uh, uh, replenishing the earth as repeopling the earth. Yes. He has this first earth, Satan being the prince and ruler over it, and that's why he's so angry when God creates Adam and gives Adam dominion over. It. He's mad at Adam. He takes that position. Yeah. I don't want to misrepresent him because it's been a long time, but that's basically the way I remember it. I, I think that's correct. I do. I think that's what he believed. Um, I, I do believe that was the way he he did, he said it in there. I really do. Uh, I really do believe we have to go back to the old covenant and new covenant and ask ourselves what continued and what didn't. Amen. Yeah. What was brought over into the new covenant? Was there anything? Nada. It was all a type in the shatter. Yep. Yeah. It was that. Except, of course, for the Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and the tithe. Don't forget the tithe. Oh, the tithe. <laughs> yes, y'all. <yeah. laughs> Keep them cards and letters coming in, folks. <laughs> I'll tell you what that Sabbath will do. It'll make liars out of preachers. Absolutely. I, I remember a fella, he actually stood up in the pulpit and claimed that because he, he wouldn't buy gas on Sunday, but he had to uh, be gone and drive somewhere, and he swore the Lord made that car go about 200 miles on an empty tank. <laughs> now, I think my children understood that was not right. <laughs> uh, mm. I, got a, I got a verse here that uh, talks about the uh, men. Okay. Uh, talking about angels and, and mm -hmm. interbreeding and all that sort of stuff which I have no knowledge on, but it's in Acts 17, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And he hath made of one blood all mm -hmm. nations yep. of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation uh, unfortunately Amen. we got sinful blood Amen. but i just wonder i said this a lot of times to people and of course some people don't like it because they want to separate uh, ham from japheth and shem and you know they go through all that kind of yeah i heard all my life one blood well, all blood one blood i and heard most blood of my life ham was all black. nations and i don't see no angels in that in that blood mm. well, what what verse was that, brother? It's twenty six of the seventeen in Acts. That's where it's up there, Mars Hill. Mars Hill, Mars Hill. Yeah. It was Paul. Paul talking to him. But you know, if, if you read on to the next verse, it says that if they should seek the Lord, if happily he might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Mm -hmm. well, that's another another thing there but there's nothing no giant no uh, evil 
Satan himself is going to come against you unless the Lord says we need to do it for a reason. And I think of the old prodigal. Who sent that prodigal into that sinful world? Mm -hmm. Who financed him? <laughs> Who protected him while he was out there? Amen. And when the boy was coming back, it was a father that was right there waiting for him. Amen. And the servants didn't even know who the boy was. So it must have been a long time, I would say. So, so what are you going to do? Charge God with some kind of sinfulness? Can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, I've been accused of it many, many times. But God will take that, uh, his purpose. And he can use anything that he's created to do to fulfill his purpose. And you get old hard-headed Welshman like me, man, he, he, he got a, I got a head of stone. <laughs> so it took him a little bit extra, I do believe. So I, that's why I feel bad. Of course, I guess you guys get accused of the same uh, heresy and all, all what you hear about that kind of stuff. But he made one blood. Yep. And I don't know about the breeding of angels and, and sons of God or whatever you guys are talking about, but I'll just rest on that. What it says in the Acts? We got that's, a sinful blood. That's, that, 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 uh, that's a perfect resting place, brother. Yeah. So we continue reading. I mean, go to verse 28. Mm -hmm. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of our own poets have said. Paul wasn't talking to Christians there. He was talking to the heathen of Mars Hill. That's right. And even the heathen understood that a little bit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And he's not liking the gold and silver and stone. Anyway, I, I'm done with that, but that's, that's a good verses to read every once in a while. I believe, I do believe, at least for me. It is. You want, really want to get into a, a, a thought that just blows your mind? Uh, I've always asked, and I've asked this to several folks, and they look at me kind of, like, what are you talking about? I've often wondered about the beasts of the field in the Old Testament. I wonder, were they different than some others? Um, they're almost named as another class of creation. Uh, in sackcloth and in ashes, the beasts of the field were. Um, Nebuchadnezzar went out and was raised by the beast of the field. It's hard for me to believe that was a pack of wolves. I, I don't have an answer. I'm just raising a question. <laughs> I wonder if anybody else had ever thought of it or about it. That would be uh, in Daniel, right? Yeah. Yeah, because he did, he did crawl on his hands and knees and was like the animals. And I have to go back and read it again. You know, talking about old Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you got to remember too that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. That's right. <laughs> There's a lot of them beasts of the field.
Well, the, the firmament declares the glory of God, and the beast of fields part of the firmament. They declare the glory of God. But it was part of that question I didn't get, uh, the first part of it. Uh, the beast of the no. field. Yeah, there's a there was fowl, there was man, there were fowls, there were uh, the planet, the trees, and uh, the creeping things. Mm -hmm. But then the beasts of the field are spoken of almost as a separate group throughout the scriptures. That's what I was wondering if anybody had ever thought about it. I'm trying to remember what Brother Pound used to say about that. He had a thought on it. <laughs> I think I know what he might have held. <laughs> I, I will not let it pass my lips. <laughs> oh, mercy. You know, God told Nebuchadnezzar, they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of heaven, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And then, it, of course, it said in the next verse that he did it. Uh, that happened unto him. And his hairs grew like eagle feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. There's other scriptures talks about in times of mourning that the beasts of the fields cover themselves with sackcloth. Like I said, I'm raising the question. I don't have a single answer. <laughs> Brother, you're supposed to have the answer. <laughs> that question is not rhetorical, I guarantee you. <laughs> Oh, mercy sakes. What happened to Brother Napier and Brother Gabriel? I thought they were on for a minute. Gabriel was. Brother John Napier's name's still here, but his uh, thing's all blacked out. Ain't no telling about him. What the poor leave, the beast of the field may eat. Talking about gleanings. Brother, where, you, where are you at? Uh, where's, where are you reading? Exodus 23, 11. That's a the one nice thing I found about Cruden's concordance is he'll have a lot of phrases in it. He'll separate beast of the field out from just beast mm -hmm. so that you can uh, you can find it easier. You must have that complete regard, not the concise one. <laughs> I got whatever Billy Davis had. <laughs> When uh, when Sister Audrey Davis died, their kids boxed up all all the books they had and called me and asked me if I wanted them. All the old signs of the times from 1897 to 1980 something, and everything else. And there was a Cruden's concordance in it. I had never used one before. Beast of the field, 2311, Exodus. Mm. And the seventh year thou shalt let it rest. Well, ten, in six years thou shalt sow thy land and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and be still that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave, the beast of the field shall eat. In like manner, thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive yard.
Deuteronomy 7.22. And the Lord God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beast of the field increase upon thee. I, I don't know where it's at, Brother Robert. Seems like I remember in one of the prophets somewhere it says, and let the beasts of the field cover themselves with sackcloth and ashes. Okay. Well, I haven't got that one yet, but it does say in Ezekiel. Uh, in Ezekiel 31. Um, talking about Pharaoh, it says, Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. Now, y'all elucidate on that one for a minute. Uh, maybe it's this one. Let's see. Well, that's terrible. Put on reading glasses and still can't read. <coughs> this might be one Brother Wayne's got on his mind. Ah, come on, yeah. Jonah three eight. Well, I was thinking uh, Jonah three eight. Okay, that was the one I had. I had a different one. I had Hosea four three. Therefore shall the land mourn. And everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field and with the fowls of heaven. The fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with priests. All right, we're looking now at the book of Jonah. <coughs> Sorry, brother, I called away a minute. Did I miss That's something? A, yeah, you missed you missed the whole thing. <laughs> we done solved it. <laughs> I mean it was glorious. <laughs> well, the, 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 Lord, Lord, the Lord gives it to you, it'll be that quick. Amen. What was that text in Jonah again? Three eight. Three eight. Let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Yeah. And cry mightily unto God. <laughs> Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. So we got the beast of the field doing all sorts of things. Morning. Of 
priest of the field will shake at thy presence? The beast of the field cry also to thee for the rivers. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field, the pastures. That's Joel 2.22. What book is that? Joel. Two twenty two. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. And the other one that I read out of Joel was in uh, 1 and 20. The beast of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. So was there something y'all trying to get at with that? Or? We, we trying to discover what the beast of the field, if, if it's just uh, animal life, or is there more to it than that? That's kind of what, what we're... We're looking at different texts that talk about beast of the field seeming almost human. Well, do y'all believe that there will be all sorts of animals in heaven? We have evidence that there are going to be horses, or is that just a spiritual idea? Personally, I think that's a spiritual idea, but if they are, it's not going to affect me one way or the other, I hope. I do well, dig my horses. Dog, my dog's going to be there. I don't care if y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I don't know. If oh, not Lordy. I don't know. She brings me a lot of happiness. Here, but yes, yes. I, I don't know, but I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't say for sure. I don't know. But I don't think that um, that stuff that y'all call about, I don't think that it, uh, I don't think that it, it gives any idea about that. That's just my it's, opinion. No, it doesn't give us much, does it? <laughs> uh, it gave me a lot. You reading them verses, and I was getting ready to say, that's why these fellows call me an absoluter. Guys can hold everything, even the beast of the field. No spire ever drops out of heaven if you don't. That's right. Take note of. That's yeah. my God. It don't say he don't know about it. It says... Not a sparrow falls from the sky without him. Without him. That's right. Not without his knowledge. Without that's him. That's apart mean. That, that, that part from him. That goes far on knowing something. Brother Lackey, as we were talking, I thought of the verse, brute beast fitted for destruction. The natural brute beast. Natural yep. brute beast. Made brute to be taken. And destroyed. Yeah. So is that an animal or is it a person? <laughs> it sounds like a person, but. It is person. <laughs> okay.
just like the vessels of wrath in Revelation chapter 9, they are vessels of wrath fitted to destruct. There are yeah. vessels, there are individuals, there are people that God created to be destroyed. Now, whether people believe that or not, that's their business, but that's what it says. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You know, uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians when he talked about those that said the body rises not, he talked about, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Hmm. We, we kind of have a record of what happened in Ephesus. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the man prayed and <clears throat> he said that my preaching might be acceptable among all the saints which believe and that I might be delivered from unwicked and unreasonable men for all men have not faith now missionary churches they want to deliver you to such folks because they think that 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 would be you know work out best but he said deliver me from wicked and unreasonable men for all men have not faith. Amen. And that was the reason why he wanted to be delivered to them as opposed to those other folks. So what you're saying is the uh, if the brute if the brute beasts are indeed uh, example of men, uh, so they're out there. But uh, I got a verse that says every knee is going to bow and confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Now is that the brute beast too, or he's going to drop them off in the heaven or hell? <laughs> I believe they're all. I believe God's glory is going to tell to all of them. And even that old boy there, um, rich man and Lazarus, was it? Mm -hmm. He could look across a little bit. He said, "Send me back, convert my brother." Right? Or I, I might not have that correct, but uh, he could see a lot from hell, couldn't he? Well, I mean. <clears throat> All in that particular verse, it, when it says that um, that all uh, will bow the knee and all will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father, mm -hmm. whether they in heaven or in earth or under the earth, and, and they'll do, do it in every tongue. Perhaps he's talking about the gospel dispensation. Now, when every tongue and every um, tongue or language uh, confesses him to be so, but uh, if not, no, I don't. I don't necessarily think that. Um, I mean, it seems like you uh, trying to say that the. Uh, some folks, maybe, you know, no hellers or whatever. Anyway, God's well, God's going to make them say, yes, Jesus is Lord and mean it. And then, you know, they'll be one of God's elect. And uh, that, that, that was certainly not what I meant to say. 
because even that old Roman soldier there that uh, witnessed the crucifixion of Christ said, surely this was a son of God. Did he have electing grace? I'm no judge of it, but I think men men confess things. God makes them, he squeezes out of them like a babe, you know, they'll confess them. And it's not, they're not saved people. They just all of a sudden realize something. Of course, I'm, I'm no judge of that, but um, well, no, I you're right. every tongue, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Whether they're yeah, in hell or every, tongue, every, every language, you know. Um, I definitely agree. Um, you know, I, I've heard that before about people. Uh, you know, being uh, made or forced to uh, to say that you know Jesus is Lord and whatnot, but I just. I don't think that, I mean, I don't think that means anything, really. Well, you can keep glory, it. I mean, it brings glory to God, no doubt. But as far as doing anything for them, I, I don't, I can't say that. I don't know. You could teach a parrot to say Jesus is Lord. Anybody can say that. Yeah. There are plenty of, plenty of people in this world that say that. Yeah. Yeah. When you're trying to tell them what the Lord means, they back away real quick. Yeah, what kind of a Lord? You're right, brother, brother Harold. Yeah, it uh there's a there's a there's a town down here, a big sign as you go in. I can't remember now, it's in Louisiana. But anyway, it says Jesus is a Lord over whatever that name of that city was. I bet there ain't a sound church in that whole town anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I I kind of believe with the brother that sometimes we look at all and we kind of translate it the way we want to. Mm -hmm. It very seldom means every person or everyone. And I think it does mean all kinds. In other words, there's going to be all kinds of people. There's going to be all tongues, all languages. Mm -hmm. uh, some out of our kindred tribe and tongue, I believe the scripture says. And that they will acknowledge. And I think that is the glory that God gets. I frankly can't see a lot of glory in forcing someone to say uh, he's Lord. Uh, that's just me. Mm -hmm. Well, as I said before, the uh, firmament declares the glory of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard the firmament ever talk or anything, but uh, I think I know what that verse means. But that's yeah. to me. And that's a good point. I, I really don't know. I, I'm not going it, to it does declare the glory of God, especially to those that know the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what it does for those that hate the Lord and don't know the Lord and don't care about the Lord. Me either. So I can't speak for them, but I'll ask that question. Next time they jump me, I'll, 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 uh, I'll ask that question. Yeah, I've, I've heard testimonies of people saying that they came, you know, their interest in the Lord came by just observing nature and uh, seeing all the things that's done. Well, that frankly is not my experience. I, I never once thought about the trees declaring the kind, the hills dancing and skipping. I never once thought about that. <laughs> it's only when the Lord got a hold of me, he kind of he he overtook me, and uh, mm -hmm. wasn't mm -hmm. anything else I could do but to submit to Him. I don't even like the word submit, but uh, I didn't I didn't have a thought about Him. Oh yeah, I I, I heard about hell, and I didn't want to go there. Uh, I'd do anything to stay out of hell. Mm -hmm. uh, God taught me that's not what salvation is about. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the love of God. I will agree with that 100%. Absolutely, Cliff. Absolutely. Trying to scare a man to death, it ain't going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like I said, I was coming down a hill in a hurricane, water up to my things, just praising God. <laughs> 
Well, you just had to put me in that position, I guess. So yeah. I, I'm really, uh, I really, I really like, I like that. And uh, as to them other folks that, uh, who's going to say to glory to God, I don't know. But uh, I noticed one thing in the scriptures from the beginning to the end. He, well, I, he don't care for anybody acting like um, uh, to bring disparaging against his people or his name. I, I honor his name. I definitely believe that uh, they will perish and it will glorify God. I yeah. don't think saying God is Christ is Lord is necessarily glorifying when they don't believe it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sure I'm sure all you guys have run across people. I know it was a bluegrass festival and a guy that I known for years come up towards the end of it and saying goodbye and everything. And I said, you know, I said, the Lord has blessed me and given a testimony and talking to folks about the goodness of the Lord. And, uh, and they was from all sorts of Armenia and every kind of people right. you'd ever, ever, what you guys are uh, ho hollering about and all. But uh, it just blessed my soul. When I said to him, I said, Gene, I says, I really believe in my heart that there are people there to confess the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And they don't have any spiritual discernment or you know about that right and, uh, i i guess you met folks like that. and i'm not a judge and i don't mean to say i am but you know the spirit does testify when yeah. when you meet somebody and you know where to what to, where they're coming from and and that sort of thing but the, the the process of it i can't put down on a piece of paper for you All right Well, the result of uh, each experience is the same, but the experience itself isn't always the same with I people. Agree. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard a guy said, if unless you, unless you've had a Damascus Road experience like the Apostle did, you ain't saved. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard. I didn't, I didn't have. I didn't have one like that. Uh, so that bothered right. me a little bit. Well, brethren, I'm going to leave you all. I've got to get up early in the morning. It was good fellowship I'm with y'all. I do. Good to meet you, brother. And uh, God bless each of you. Thank you, you for, well. uh, you for your good night. 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 Brother Robert, that's chasing those rabbits. We ain't caught it yet. I think Brother Rob is going to sleep. Huh? What's the old bluegrass song say? You get that rabbit in the log and you put a briar in and twist it. <laughs> Drag him on out. Huh? Maybe you better get a briar. Them little old dashing things are hard to catch, Brother Cliff. <laughs> Not if you got a good dog. Yeah, that's true. When I was a boy, there was a fella, he used a 22 to, to hunt uh, uh, rabbits. And he said it was it was not fair if you didn't make them run before you shot them. <laughs> he, was a, he was a marksman though. He could hit them on the fly. I mm. saw him one day shoot a squirrel, tapping the tree, hit him right in the middle of the air. <laughs> I've seen fellows like that. They, uh, yeah. you know, when a mockingbird gets over to the squirrel, pecking yeah. at it, you know, and, yeah. and he shot that mo mockingbird right out of the air. I seen him do it. Oh. Point to. You're kidding. But yeah, I. He was from Mountain City, Tennessee, so. I couldn't shoot that good with a scope. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't shoot a mockingbird anyway. I wouldn't either. And he's a, he's a he's a. He's a uh, white headed eagles come around here, uh, bald eagles, they call them. Yeah. Come, they land the field. That mockingbird will go and attack them, peck at them, peck at them. <laughs> They're too big to catch him, you know. Uh, they got a lot of heart in old mockingbird. Yeah. Uh, be like a little feist dog trying to attack a dove and pinch, a pincher, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, they're quick. 
Yeah, he, look like he can't get him. He's too slow. I, I, I got. I have one on the back in the back. I see him quite often. Uh, and the way they move sideways just astounds me. I, and it's just zip, zip. <laughs> yep. God's got a purpose for every one of them. Mm -hmm. And I, ho I hope the Lord would let us see the purpose in it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When I see the animals out there fooling with each other and, and hunting each other and all that stuff, uh, I think of the Lord and, and, and his great sovereign power over all things. Amen. That's well, a good thought, Brother Cliff. That's something good to think on. Yeah. I had nobody ever teach that to me, but just yeah. the Lord, the Lord. Yeah. So if I get a little poetic on you, don't get uh, upset. <laughs> That's all right, brother. I I like to hear people talk about the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. What books do y'all like? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I mean, I mean, I, know. I mean, him books. I know. I was just being stupid. I tell you what, I'm 76 years old. To be honest with you, I used to have a large library, and I read a lot. Over the last few years, I've given my books to my boy, and. Uh, I hardly read anything unless it's some from somebody gives me like Brother Poole gave me uh, his works on Joseph and predestination. Mm. And very selective. I got tired of reading all the reformers and having to sift through. All oh yeah, them. I mean as far as as far as your hymn books, like which oh the hymn books. What hymn books do you like? I thought you said books. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean books, but I, I like. I mean, but. I, I, I like them all, but uh, I like the Psalter. I really do. Uh, yeah. I, uh, the the Psalm Foot and Metric. Uh, Robert Lackey. Uh, uh, yeah, like several that. from the Psalms, the Church of Scotland, they sing that. <laughs> Duran Lester. Uh, is the one we used in North Carolina most of the time. And, uh, but you know, I've noticed uh, some of those books, like Brother Lackey even mentioned, so I, I, in past years, and I can't tell you which ones, but I noticed that there was some songs that in one book would have a verse that was definitely uh, supralapsarian in thought and it'd be left out of another book. Uh, well, I, have a, I have a copy of the uh, Hymn and Tune book, the Duran and Lester book. Uh -huh. I, think that's, I think that's one of the best books that the Primitive Baptist ever had. Yeah, that, that's, that's what they use it. Well, where I went in North Carolina. I mean, that's my personal opinion, I mean. Uh, the Gatsby's okay. I used to sing out of the Gatsby a lot. I, I just love to read them whether I sing them or not. Mm -hmm. Beautiful thoughts. I don't have a BB hymnal. I don't have a, I don't guess I've ever saw a Thompson's hymnal. Well, I have a BB, but I don't, I don't look at it too much because there's, there's so much in there. Uh-huh. You can't really, you know. Right. Uh, I know in the, in the Gatsby, the last, I don't know how many hundreds of pages are mostly all heart, you know, uh, uh, hymns that are put there. There's also a uh, primitive that got notes that I kind of liked that we used in here in Mississippi some, and it was just called the old school hymnal. But it did have notes in it. 
Oh, I've heard of the old school hymnal. Yeah, they, they use that old school hymnal down in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Do they? Uh, yeah, and it, I think it's a good book. Yeah, there's 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 some definitely great songs in them. Definitely some great songs. I have a number nine, but I, but I, I never went further than that. I don't even know which ones I got, but I'm going to look them up for you. Ooh. I know Brother Robert mentions Goble quite a bit. Yeah, I like the Goble book. That's the one I grew up singing out of. That, that one and the Lloyd. Uh -huh. <clears throat> So I got a, I got an old school here and uh, a BB. So the old school's got the notes in it. And look, don't, don't me don't do me any good because I can't read them. What number are you singing? Well, brethren, it's ten fifteen. Yep. Well, I'm sitting here about to fall asleep. Well, we were about to sing. Oh. What were you singing? I don't know. They were finding one. Oh. The Christian's hope shall never fail. What number is that? That was 221 in the uh, old, old school. 575. I don't know what them numbers mean. BB. Oh, that's BB. Yeah, 575 and BB. Yep, two twenty one in the new red list and five seventy five in BB. Oh, am I reading out of Duran Lester? You are. You said it was two twenty one in now. Two twenty one. All right. Well, let me get the Duran and Lester. Hold on. Can we all sing together or is it the one one of them takes over the other? I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> we ought to give it a try. Yeah, ain't nothing gonna hurt. Might hurt somebody's ears, but it ain't gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. We travel through a bad With dangers thick on every hand, but Jesus guides us through the veil. The Christian's hope can Sorrows me the 
goes, as we go, and will same our overthrow, but my infernals can prevail. One I didn't hear nobody else. No, I I, I remembered that you didn't well, hear I, anybody I, I, else. I had to get my book to get my book. Yeah. I don't have any hymnal, so I couldn't do it. Oh. oh. Did you did you hear hear us all I talk? Need somebody to let it out. No. No, I didn't. I heard um Heard myself and maybe one or two others. Okay. It seems like one of them, one of them takes over the whole bunch. Yep. <laughs> they call that a leader. Duh. Well, brethren, like I say, I'm about to fall asleep here. Lord willing, we'll see no, y'all in the morning. Finally. All right, brethren, I'll see y'all later. I hope you have a great evening. What's left of it? Thank you, you too, brother. You too. We'll see y'all, nice. Lord willing, in the morning. All right. Enjoy That's it. Bye-bye, brother Clay.